Hello everyone, thank you so much for being in this breakout session. In this breakout session, we have Anna Horo with us. We will be sharing how we can leverage optimism in this season of uncertainty. My apologies for the delay in the start of the session. As I mentioned in the main group, we had some slight technical hitches trying to set up and get all the breakouts. But I'm glad you are here now, and I know you are in for a treat as work with Emma Horo. Uh, can I just ask everyone to just mute yourself, please? If I can ask you to just go and find the mute button and mute yourself so that we don't get the background noise as Emma Horo is sharing with us. So please mute yourself um, so that it doesn't disturb Emma Horo as he is sharing. Um, it, it has been thought previously that um, uh, optimism is a skill and people are considered either optimistic or pessimistic. Uh, but research is showing, or research shows, research conducted by Martin Seligman shows that actually research, um, optimism is a skill, which means that optimism can be learned. Regardless of where you start, you're able to uh, increase how uh, you look at life and the challenges of life. And I'm really happy that Enahora is here. He's going to share with us. And Ahoro is the managing director of Course Factory in Nigeria. So to Leroy's point earlier, we do have representation from West Africa, and we are very happy to have him here. And Ahoro, I don't want to spend too much time uh, going through your extensive bio because we lost a bit of time. Allow me to just yes. say that he is a life and business coach. He is an organizational development consultant and trainer. He is an authority in strategic planning and change management, and um, he is affectionately referred to as Mr. Leverage. And Ahora, please, the floor is yours. Kindly go ahead and share with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I confirm that everybody can hear me? If you can hear me, please put a yes on the chat. Great. Thank you, Devon. Thank you. Thank you. We, we might need to use this chat box um, a bit today. Um, thank you, Mucha. Um, it's been a great day so far. Early for us in Nigeria, we had to wake up at 5 to get ready by 6 to get on our screens. I'm excited with what you're doing. Well done. Well done. I wish I was in Kenya again this year uh, because it was part of the plan. But here we are. Um, great to know that we can optimistically um, get things going, irrespective of the challenges that we have um, around us. So uh, I am meant to share my screen. Um, let me see. I hope to get that done easily. Screen, share screen. Um, Are you okay, Anamoro? Yeah, I'm trying to look for the... It's the button screen. next to the screen. Hey, fantastic. Yes. Thank you. All right. Is the glass half full? Leveraging the skills of optimism to thrive. I want to believe we can all see my screen now. Um, so if I want to see the chat box, let me be sure about that first. Where would I see that um, while I manage my screen? Mm. Go to the top of your screen where the WebEx toggle is. You will see the chat, but I'm here with you. So if necessary, I can tell you what's in the chat. Okay, so while I wait to find that out, I can see it yet. Um, I'll leverage on um, your availability to work with me. Sure. All right. So um, at Post Factory, we're into training and certification. We coach and consult, and we use assessment tools like Mucha, and we work with individuals and corporate. We believe that emotions drive people and people drive performance. And all that we do is tied into those three words, emotion, people, and performance. So um, I've got a question to start with, and I'd love you to really, really use the chat box. If COVID-19 and all the challenges associated um, with it form the content of your cup, the cup of your business, the cup of your life, would you want the cup empty or full? If COVID-19 and all the challenges associated with it form the content of your own cup, 
would you want the cup empty or full? Please go to the chat box. Let me let me know what we have. Uh, Frederick says always full. So far, Frederick is the one who has says always full. Um, Michael says full. Uh, Shamano says full. Uh, Alice says full. Uh, Zahir full. Francisca says empty. Uh, Devon says full. Uh, Railwalk says full. Yeah, so the majority are going with full. I mean, so are they trying to tell me that they would like their cup to be filled with all the challenges of COVID-19? Is that what <laughs> you're saying? <laughs> Michael, Michael says, although if it's a cup of beer, I'd like it empty so I can fill it. So that I can fill it up. Uh, <laughs> says, would like us empty. Nyakato says empty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because... Um, when we look at the glass and we say, is it half empty or half full? I, I think the bigger discussion would be, um, what is our direction? What are we looking at? Um, what is the content? Because some people would want it full, some people would want it empty. But if we look at those who want it full, I'm suspecting that it might be because they're enjoying from it or they want it to be full and get empty as soon as possible. Um, but I, I, by and large, it's going to depend on the mindset of the person who's looking at the content. The cup of our life is filled with content. The cup of our business is filled with content. The cup of our family is filled with content. We determine the meaning of the content in it. Um, I believe so much that nothing means anything except the meaning that we give to it. And I repeat that. Nothing means anything except the meaning that we give to it. So we determine the meaning of the content and thus look forward to the cup being full or being empty. If we look at the content in the cup of our life, in the cup of our business, in the cup of our family, in the cup of our pursuits and endeavors, and we see all negativities and we don't know how to navigate it. Obviously, we want that cup to be empty as soon as possible. Um, and we see it as half empty and we want it to continue to reduce until we don't have all of those negativities anymore. But because it is a cup of life, it will always be filled. There will always be something inside of it. Um, and because there would always be something inside of it, it means that you would always have content to manage in our life. Those who see hope in life, they see hope in the contents of the cup of their life, will see the cup as half full. So we have two, we have two types of people here. Those who see hope, um, they would always see their cup they will always see the cup of their life, the cup of their business as half full, meaning that it's going to get better and very soon it's going to be filled. And those who see hopelessness in the content of the cup of their life will see it as half empty. So if you look at the optimism, you would notice that it's somewhere inside the red part okay. of this module. Um, and that means a lot, um, finding it in the red part. Um, the blue part of the model, which is Know Yourself, the color is blue. Because, so the, the color for the Know Yourself is blue because when you look into blue waters, you see yourself, right? Um, you gain insight. The color for the red, for the choose yourself, where optimism belongs is red. And that red is a very, very important color because that is a point where you need to start choosing what to do. So to choose optimism, um, and, and look at the words that I'm using, to choose optimism, which is in the box of choose yourself, there are two things you must always do in the middle of everything that is happening to you. Um, it's either we are on auto run or we are intentional, right, in life at every point in time. You are either on auto run or you are intentional. Now, to be intentional is 
to ensure that you're not allowing the situation to direct you. You're not allowing the events to take over you and then you're on auto run. Uh, you're doing everything that just comes to your mind because we need to do something now, right? Um, and to choose yourself, there are two tools I want to give to you today. And the first one is to take a pause. Um, you will particularly notice that I love pause a lot because we are called Pause Factory. And I believe that in being intentional with anything, one of the things that you must do is to take that one second pause, one minute pause, or one hour pause, or one day pause. You know, because uh, that, that is where you are able to find the capacity to, to do what you want to intentionally do. The other part of pause is to be on auto run, to do it like you've always done it, to do it like you always like to do it, to do it like you've registered in your subconscious and in your brain to do it. And that would have been lovely if everything is normal, if everything is fine. You can allow your subconscious to continue to direct you, to continue to tell you what to do. You wake up in the morning, you have your bath, you get into the car, you move on to the road, and you're just going, you receive a mail, you reply the mail, you know, and your, your subconscious is pushing you. In the times of change, like we are now with COVID-19, in the times of challenge, then your subconscious needs to take a pause. I look at it like the autopilot and the pilot. In the times of turbulence, um, the autopilot should not fly the plane anymore. The pilot should take over the plane. Even though it's been on cruise, right? Everything is normal. But it's times of turbulence now. And, and I believe that in times of turbulence, um, and the first thing you need to do is to take a pause. The second thing you need to do is to understand the simple sentence that says that options are always available. The inability to see option would um, zero you in to take one option. A lot of times when you have only one option left, it's most likely the wrong option because that, that is the only option that you can think about in your auto run stage. Because when you begin to analyze, what can I do? What are my options? Then you can find two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten options. And so take a pause plus options. When you are able to do that, then you'll be able to practice every other thing that I say. Optimism is to intentionally take a proactive perspective. Now, it is a perspective. Everything in life is about meaning and it's about perspective. COVID-19 has various, various, numerous, numerous perspectives. But to be optimistic, you have to intentionally choose to take a proactive perspective of hope and possibilities. That is the true meaning of optimism. It, it is not just about positive thinking, and that, that can work, but it is intentionally seeing that there is hope here, irrespective of what is around you, and seeing that there's possibility here, irrespective of what is around you. And you have to be proactive about it. You have to be intentional about it. And say to yourself, no matter what is happening right now to my business, to my pursuit, to my exam, no matter what is happening right now to my endeavors, there is hope. You don't, you don't need to see it right now. You don't need to see it immediately. But just understand that millions of people, millions of researches have shown us that if you can see that there's hope, then you can get some fuel, some petrol to move a little further. And if you move a little further, you most likely will see that thing that you're not able to see. So even before you see it, is the idea, the, the, the idea, the motive, motive, mote, the, the root word for emotion is mot, mote. And that is the same word that forms motive. And that is emotion, emotion. And, and that is also motivation, motivation. It's so, so all of those words are together. You are able to get a motivation to move ahead in the situation because you can take a proactive um, perspective of hope and possibilities. You are able to take a motive of looking for solution because you can take a perspective of hope and possibilities. This is what it takes for you to take an optimistic view in order for you to see the cup being full and then get to a level of life where you are seeing solutions. So don't forget that you take a pause and you proactively see hope and possibilities in your options. I'm trying to make it as very practical as possible and so that you can 
after this program, actually practice it. So you say that during the training, I was told to take a pause, so I'm taking a pause. And the next thing is to see hope and possibilities in my options. So what are my options? And then you begin to check for hope and possibilities. Those who see possibilities in the content of the cup of their life would see it half full. Those who see, now, now the first thing I said is hope, right, and hopelessness. The second one I st I'm talking about is possibilities and impossibilities. Those who are able to see that there's something possible here. It is possible to, to, to find this solution. It is possible. And if you, if you hear yourself saying it is possible, it is possible, it is possible. If you look at the content of your business right now, it, it doesn't seem like it's working well. If you look at the content of your relationship, it doesn't seem like it's working well. But if you can see that it is possible, if you can see possibility in your options, as you take that proactive perspective, you would see the cup half full and that optimism will bring you results. Those who see impossibilities are those who are look who look at the content and say that mm -mm, ah, this, there's no advancement here, there's no future here, there's no possibility here. And, and if you look at several stories in the world, like the stories of the Wright brothers, they were caught in the quagmire of possibilities and impossibilities. They were saying that it is possible for a plane to fly. Something can beat the law of gravity. All they were saying that it is possible. It is possible. It means that they took a proactive perspective of hope. They try and it doesn't work. They try and it doesn't work. And they keep being hopeful. It's possible. It's possible. That's what they're saying. But the world around them, everybody around them was saying that it is not possible, guys. It is not possible, guys. But did it become possible? Yes. Eight years after the first flight of the Wright brothers, eight years after, the world fought a war and we had fighter planes, dropping, dropping bombs everywhere. So look at your business today. Look at your pursuits today. Look at your well-being, your health. Look at the quality of your life. Can you see possibilities? If before this training, you were not able to see possibilities, what we're saying is that several people have seen possibilities, and you can also see the possibilities. So hopefulness, possibilities would help you. The third one I want to leave with you is continuity. Those who see continuity in the content of the cup of their life will see the cup half full and they will practice optimism. And that simply means that this is not the end. We can continue. In whatever way we can, we can continue. There's something ahead of us. There's an advancement. You see, the day a Toyota Camry 2020 cannot see continuity again, that day they stop making Toyota Camry. It's gotten to the end. No more. No more. If you cannot see continuity in your business, then that business is done. If you cannot see continuity in your relationship, then that relationship is done. If you cannot see continuity in your health, then your health is done. But is there space for continuity? Yes, so much, so much space for continuity. Some people will see discontinuity and they just end it all. Do you know that those who eventually commit suicide, these are the things they lack. They lack hopelessness. They lack the ability to see possibilities. And they lack the ability to see continuity. And they just throw it away and they give up. In the face of this pandemic, can we see continuity? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So I, I looked up on this research, a large, a large study conducted by the Harvard School of Public Health found that the most optimistic women were 30% likely, less likely, 30% less, less likely to die from any of the serious illnesses they tracked during an eight year period and including cancer, heart diseases, and stroke. Have you ever wondered why someone would probably have HIV and is living his life, he was not aware, everything is fine, and from the day he hears that he has HIV and he begins to see impossibilities, discontinuity, the health begins to deteriorate? It's because there's no more hope. It's because there's no more optimism. 
He can't see the glass half full anymore. It's getting, it's getting empty and it's, the health begins to deteriorate. Are we getting it? So how do we practice it for now? You know, I've, I've given you a few steps and I said, take a course, right? And then look for the options. What options? Look for continuity options, look for hopeful options, and look for possibility options. And as we go further, I want you to be intentional about the interpretations of your event. How do you interpret the events that are around you? When you take a pause and interpretations are going on, how do you interpret it, right? Is COVID-19 a death sentence really for the world? Is it the end of the world? Is it the end of your business? What are you? What are you what are the conversations in your mind? You have to be intentional. Because if you're not intentional, if you look at all that's in the news, CNN news, all the, all the news that you're hearing, all the terrible news and all the terrible situations around you, if you're not intentionally choosing the interpretations where you're able to see possibility, where you're able to see continuity, if you're not intentional about it, what will take over your subconscious would be negativities. And that could not be a full, and it not continue to be full. So how are you interpreting the things that are around you right now? Is there interpretation that is going left, and can you take a pause and stop it, and change it into a better option? What do I mean by better option? Into an optimistic option? What do I mean by optimistic option? Option into a continuity option, into a possibility option, into a hopeful option. That option is available. So I'm saying that another very important exercise that you need to carry out is to dispute, dispute the permanent definition of bad events with temporary evidences. And what do I mean by that? I mean that when an event happened to you, for example, your business, some people would define it with permanent definition it's a bad event and it is done it is permanent it's bad and it's totally bad right it's gone um COVID-19 is temporary so some people will look at COVID-19 and say this is a bad event it has destroyed the world no they look at it from a permanent perspective a permanent definition but you can see there is a temporary one and I can have a, an evidence to dispute it. By dispute, you know the meaning of dispute? To quarrel, to fight, right? So you're, you're fighting with the thoughts of, the, of your mind that is saying this is permanent. The business would not work anymore, right? The relationship cannot work anymore. That is a permanent definition of a circumstance, but you can dispute it with a temporary evidence. What do I mean? And so this kind of COVID-19 event happened in 1918. Oh, the world was shut down. Ships could not move from country to another. But guess what? It ended and life continued. And people like us came in never knowing that such a thing happened. Now, that is the temporary evidence to show that this cannot be a permanent situation. Right? If you do not pass an exam, right? And you look at it as a permanent thing, like I would never be able to pass this exam. A temporary evidence would be that you have passed a few exams in the past. That's an evidence. As far as you have passed a few exams in the past, it means disputation. It means that I can pass this exam too. What we have done in that state is to look at this situation that you were trying to define as permanent, that your negativity was trying to de define as permanent and you had a disputation with it, a conversation with it. And you said to it, listen, no, this is not permanent. I have passed exams in the past. If I have passed exams in the past, then it means that I can pass this exam, right? Um, if you had an issue with your husband, for example, and you say all men, all men are bad, right? That is creating a permanent definition of men. But are all men bad? The answer is no. If all men are not bad, 
it means that I don't have a man that is permanently bad. Or I don't have a marriage that is permanently bad. So in whatever state you find yourself, you will have the responsibility. When your life coach is not there, when Mucha is not there, your business is to help you. When nobody's around to help you, one of the things you would do is to look for a temporary evidence to dispute the permanent definition that is coming to your subconscious because of the situation you find yourself right now. Bad events are not permanent. They are not. They are not permanent. And by the way, the things that happen to you are not your outcomes. They are events. And let me repeat that. The things that happen to you, like COVID-19 is happening to all of us, they are not outcomes. They are events. Outcomes will be fashioned, will be fashioned from what we decide to do. And when we decide to do something and we come to a result, that result in itself becomes another event. And we unfold events continuously in our life, but we also have opportunities to unfold our outcomes continuously. That's number two. Number three. So before I go to number three, can I have anybody who you're going through any challenge right now and you can find a temporary, temporary evidence to dispute that challenge? What would it be? Think of something that is not working around you, not working as much as you would love it to work. And tell me one temporary, temporary success of the past, one success that has happened before that can be an evidence to dispute this situation that you are in right now. And I can give you some petrol, some fuel to move forward. Can anybody do that in the chat box? As, uh, our, as we are waiting for anyone who wants to share in the chat box, Esther, uh, I see your comment, uh, the things that she loves, the comment you made, that the things that happen to you are outcomes, they are not events. Um, I can start by sharing, uh, if I've understood you correctly. Right no, no, now, can I quickly correct? Sorry, can I quickly correct that? The things that happen to you are events, they are not outcomes. Ah, they, are they are events. events. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, that's right. Yes, they are events. That's All right. what she Thank said. You. Uh, they are events, sorry, not outcomes. Um, sorry, Esther, so you can change that. The things that happen to you are, they are events, not outcomes. So they don't define who you are. So if I think of um, a situation I'm in currently that could really, that's really been causing uh, stress on me, uh, my sons, uh, I have two boys, and they are in, um, they are in, in doing online learning. And I'll be honest with you, um, especially for my younger son, it's been driving me crazy. And uh, he has been, you know, struggling, I think, because he really loves the connection in class. So I think when I'm in the moment where we are having those, I call them intense moments of fellowship, where we are at each other, I think what I can remind myself is that uh, the evidence from the past is that my son is a very happy uh, individual who, you know, doesn't always you know, throw tantrums at the drop of a hat. So I can remind myself wow. of this happy boy. And in the moment when we are having this intense moment of fellowship, I can just remind myself of that fact. And that will help me, I think, that will pull me out of getting stuck in this cycle that we sometimes find ourselves where, you know, he kicks off and then I am tempted to kick off as well. So I hope that's an example that, 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 um, that is correct that's in our way. That's a powerful, powerful example. Because in the moment where you are having that intensive moment, it looks like this this son is not going to move ahead. It looks like, oh, this is affecting him. He's not going to be doing well anymore. But when you remember that, no, he's a happy boy. He's a happy child. Once you have that remembrance, you've disputed that moment of intensity and the definition that that moment wants to give to you. Powerful, powerful, powerful example, Moja. And everybody can find that evidence. That evidence is always there. Unfortunately for us, what our emotions do is that our emotions tie us to the present. 
it forgets, it, it helps us to forget the big picture. So in that moment, as you're feeling frustrated, all you can think about is that moment. That is emotion. But emotional intelligence, you see, which is the difference? There is emotions and there is emotional intelligence. Emotions will tie you to the present, wants you to sort out the emotion of the present. But emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence will show you the big picture and tell you that mm -mm, it's not just this moment that is existing. There are bigger moments. Some things are working. This would pass. And so take it easy. And that's why we practice emotional intelligence. That's number two. Number three, and this is very important. Number three. Um, so um, I can see Tasnamo. Did I get right? Um, I'm currently responsible to mm -hmm. ensure that we manage any COVID scare suspect cases in manufacturing plant. This is so scary for me because I am asthmatic and I have to draw a line between protecting myself and somehow also educating and ensuring all are safe. And so um, if you want to practice emotional intelligence, it's, that is very simple. What am I feeling? I am scared. I am scared right now because I'm asthmatic. Okay. What are my options? What are my options? What options are available to me right now? If the options that are available to you to be to choose from um, would be about your health, because forgive yourself, we say what matters the most now? What matters the most now? So if you go back to that circle, you see the red, you see the blue, the red, and the green. So the blue says, what am I feeling? I'm feeling scared. The red says, what are my options? Um, look for the best time to stay in the, in the factory, all right? Create a new process so that you don't have to stay in the factory where there, are, um, where there will be asthmatic um, um, prone um, environment. What are the options? Number three, what do you really want? What you really want is to ensure that your health is safe. And so use what you really want, your health safety, plus the fact that production must go on, use it to look for the option that is possible. A lot of times you can find a new option apart from the options that are always available in the office, in, 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 the, in your rules, in your regulation, in your policies and procedures. And that is why we say, always ask yourself, what are the options? If you don't start to ask that questions, you will not generate those lovely options that will help you beat that situation. And so I'm saying to you now, um, Magodi, what are the options that are available to you in order to achieve the production at the same time, keep your health safe? What are the options? What are the options? Now, if you want to use optimism, because this is not a permanent situation, when have you been in a situation where you are concerned with your health, but you were able to manage the situation? What did you do? If you have done that in the time past, it means that you can do this one too. And that thought will then give you the energy to provide new options. That is optimism. That is petrol. That is fuel, fueling your engine to look for solution. I hope you got that. Number three, never define an unwanted situation as your universal experience. Never. And this is intentional. You have to intentionally remember never to define an unwanted situation as your universal experience. What, excuse me, what do I mean by unwanted situation? For example, your proposal did not go through. Your proposal was rejected. That is not a universal experience. For you, no. It doesn't mean all your proposals will not get through. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean all your proposals will, will be rejected. That is a specific situation. This proposal has been rejected, right? Um, this particular man is not working for me. That is just every time you find yourself in an unwa unwanted situation, you have to practice the, you have to practice seeing it in an isolated moment, in an isolated moment, specific moment. For example, if I don't, if I didn't pass my exam, that's not a universe. It means that it is a specific situation. Why? It's an unwanted situation. Every time, every time you find yourself with an unwanted result in an unwanted situation, never define it as your universal experience. It is just a specific experience. It will pass and more experiences would come. More experiences would come to you, right? Uh, um, so I love what you said. The past has informed me a lot 
inform me a lot at this time and there's always there's always something to tap onto um okay so that is number three before we take other things what like what unwanted situation are you in right now about your studies about your business about your marriage about your health what unwanted situation are you in right now and how can you glean from this number three never define an unwanted situation as your universal experience even if it's cancer we've seen people beat cancer you know why because they didn't see it as a universal experience it is not their universal experience it is but for a moment and they will beat it and things would continue right oh but people died of cancer yes but that is also not a universal experience right and if you look at what i said in number two you realize that you can be disputed how do i dispute it somebody died of cancer and you're saying that i should and i should not be scared oh there are several millions of people that have contacted cancer and they didn't die of it that is a great dispute we can quarrel with it we can dispute it we can dispute it right never never so so um let, let's get to the end of this. The next one, never think that you are not powerful enough to solve any challenge. The day you think you're not powerful enough to solve any challenge, the day you lose power. And once you lose power, you're going to see that glass cup as half empty and you're going to throw in the towel. Never think that you're not powerful to solve any challenge. Never. Always ask yourself, what are my options? What can I do now? what else can i do what is in the horizon what is on the other side what's on the other side never um several other problems have been solved in your life this one too can be solved that's a disputation if i have solved several other problems in my life then this one i would solve it and the last one know that time would pass there's something on the other side of this situation and you can be part of it know well time will pass there's something on the other side even if i cannot see it there's something there if i get to the other side i would see that thing and so can i keep walking to the other side it's fuel fuel to your engine and if you get to the other side you can be part of it this is how to practice optimism intentionally everything i've said here is a tool a tool that you can use in a moment where you're finding challenges and you seem to be losing power. I will get in it. I'd love to take your questions now. I have paid for a cruise holiday, which had to be canceled. Oh, and I'm not sure thank you. of when it will be. Thank you so much, Anna Horo, for sharing. Um, this is just powerful, powerful stuff. Optimism is so powerful. And I love the idea that it's a skill that we can develop, right? So. It means that we yeah. can actually change the way we frame the situations uh, in our lives. And I really like the point you made about disputing uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the temporary, with evidence, looking at my situation and thinking, wait a minute, this is not who I am. There is evidence that I can be different or I can do different. Um, guys, we have a few minutes remaining. We would like to take any questions that you may have for Ena Horo. Uh, feel free to use the chat. And in this session, you can also unmute yourself. This is a smaller session. So feel free to unmute yourself if you want to ask your question. And uh, Anna Horo will answer. I think we have about 10 minutes. Our next panel discussion starts at 11.45. So we have about 10, 12 minutes that we can answer some questions. Anna Horo, I don't know so if you want Alice, to comment about Alice's point. Yeah. Alice, Alice said, I paid for a cruise holiday which had to be cancelled. I'm not sure of when it will be possible to travel again. Oh, really? To travel to that cruise holiday or to travel around where you are? Which of it? And if you were not able to travel, what else can you do that you wanted to enjoy in a cruise holiday? Because options are always available. What else did you want to do? Do you want to rest? Or if you wanted to rest, can you find other ways to rest? Do you want to read? If you wanted to read, can you look for other ways to read? Are we getting it? If you wanted to uh, be on your own, right? 
I don't know if your hotels are open in Kenya. Can you look for somewhere around where you can have a solitary time um, apart from traveling? Are we getting it? Options, options. To travel to that destination. Okay, so that this is not a permanent um, cancellation. So can you wait a little while? Because that's another option. I will wait because it is not permanent. That destination will come back again very soon. And the world will continue to go there for holidays. All I need to wait is a little more time. A little more time. Because people started traveling to Greece. Oh, yes, we can wait. And while you wait, what can you enjoy while you wait? Are we getting it? There are always options. Always options. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Any other one? I, I like what you just said in a horror. Um, when you were asking Alice and you, are, you said to her, what are some of the things that she had planned to do on the cruise? I really like that thought that, okay, I'm not able to do what I had planned to do entirely, but is there some elephant element of it that I can still do? So, you know, um, yes, you may not be able to travel to that destination, but I like the point you made that if as part of the cruise or as part of whatever it is you plan, there are elements of it that you can still put into place now, then why not put those into place? I, I like that. I, I like mm -hmm. that idea. At least really wants to get to the destination. Any questions? Uh, can, Anyone else wait. with any questions? Sorry, Anahoro. Anyone else with any questions? Yes. but I'm happy to to share something. Um, so one of the things that you talk about are disputing techniques. And the one thing that I found quite useful as well, and it, it takes you back to that glass half full approach, is just looking at something from a different perspective. So as an example, if you had a really bad review and you feel like it's the end of the world and it's a permanent situation that you're going to find yourself in, um, the, the one technique that I've found quite useful to dispute it is you start a sentence with, isn't it wonderful that? And in that case, to try and shift the perspective, it was more of, isn't it wonderful that I got three hours to spend time with the VP of the company who actually took the time to listen to what I had to say and present and provided honest and direct feedback. And that was quite a quite a learning and powerful experience. So again, it's yeah. it's just kind of shifting it from a negative to how can I grow from this experience? Great, great. So I love that. Isn't that it is wonderful? That? Yeah, that is powerful. Isn't it wonderful? That? Yeah. And, and and I think the other um, the other thing because optimism is also about having a growth mindset is the idea of changing the phrase and adding yes to the end of it and this is something i talk to my kids about a lot uh, you know I, I can't do this yet because when you yeah. change when you add the yet it does exactly what you were just talking about this idea of reframing um yeah reframing so i, I like that i really love that I love it. Uh, Isn't is it wonderful? Else that? Any comments or um, questions they'd like to ask? We are wrapping up. We've just got four minutes to go. Okay, so I, I take it there's no additional questions. Thank you very much, guys, for logging into this session. Again, apologies for the slight technical challenges we had at the start. Please um, go back to the main session. Remember, you need to exit this and then um, use the link that you had when you started this morning. So exit here, use the link that you had when you started this morning. We're really excited about what's coming up next. We have another panel discussion and we will be doing our draw, our draw. We have some awesome prizes uh, available and we, are, we have some exciting news that we'll also be sharing. So please come out of here and join the main session using the link you had in the morning. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy the, rest of the session. And thank you so much, Enahoro, 
for sharing Thank these you. amazing insights. Uh, you'll be happy to know, guys, that this was being recorded and we will share the recordings with you. So that also means that you get to hear what happened in the other sessions. So thank you so much for your time. Let's go back to the main session. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Anna Horo. We appreciate it. Bye. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure.